What's up friends, family, Hader Army, welcome back to another sneaker review, in-depth review of the Nike Air Max 2019 Premium. These were £165, I'm a UK size 10, I'm eager to do this unboxing, try them on for, let you know my honest thoughts and opinions, are they worth the money? Before we get into this sneaker review in-depth, make sure to hit subscribe, lots of sneaker content dropping over the next few weeks, and also be on the lookout because... As we get closer to bigger numbers of subscribers, I'm planning to do giveaways and stuff too. Uh, that's a that's a idea that came from one of the subscribers on the channel, so I think that's a great idea. I might do a big giveaway towards 5,000. So hit subscribe. Lots and lots of sneaker content coming over the next couple of weeks. So without further ado. Let's dive right in and discover what's inside this night box. And this is the white platinum and lime green tint Vapor Max 2019. Here we go. So let's just check the colorway before we unbox. It is the white dark gray platinum tint and lime blast tint on the base of the shoe. It says made in Vietnam. I wonder how much it costs to make one of these sneakers. Nike are making so much of these. This was 165 pounds, which is a hell of a lot of money. So here we go. We have the white, gray, silver, platinum and lime tint on the base of the sneaker. And this has moved away from Vapor Max 1 and Vapor Max Flyknit 2 and the Vapor Max Plus and the Vapor Max Run Utility because this has TPU material which is thermoplastic polyurethane and it has more of a plastic uh, feel to it and it's easy to clean, easy to wipe off dirt and it feels a lot different to the Flyknit that we're used to seeing on the previous versions of the Vapor Max. Now, I'm pretty sure that this will, this TPU material will be repeated off other Nike models. It's been seen on the Nike Zoom Fly. It's been seen on the Nike React Element 55 and the React Element 87. I'm not the biggest fan of it. It feels cheaper. I prefer the Flyknit. This material unfortunately creases a lot more than the Flyknit. The Flyknit stays snug and has a smooth structure, structured appearance throughout the entire duration of you wearing them, whether it be four months in, five months in, six months in. But if you look at this, I, I'm, I hope the camera picks this up. Let it just focus a second. There's actually crease marks in it and that has this actually has paper shoved into it. So if I remove the paper from the inside of the shoe, I'm pretty sure, there you go. It loses its shape very, very fast. That's the most disappointing thing regarding this TPU material on the upper midsole. Um, it loses its structure and it loses its shape and it doesn't have that same snug feeling. Appearance wise, it seems and feels cheaper, this TPU material. Nike are heavily pushing it amongst certain sneakers, but I'm not a fan. I prefer the Flyknit material. This is just me giving you my honest thoughts and opinions. Let's ignore the upper midsole for a while. Um, let's look at the sole and base of the shoe. It has the traditional air cushion in a lime tint. I do love the lime tint. There's not a lot of transparency. If you can see, there's a slight bit of transparency, but the color is quite deep and is quite sparkly. So the lime tint is very much prevalent over the transparency of the air cushion. It's got a little edge on the top, um, which is a variation of plastic too. The heel, uh, it's got a bit of a white suede segment on the heel and it says vapor max a couple of times on the heel also it's also got vapor max engraved just above the air cushion on the other side of the shoe um, like i said before the traditional air cushion is the same as in other vapor max series the only thing that's changed is the upper midsole um, as you can see there's a couple creases in there and this has got paper shoved in to hold the shape as soon as i take them out um, 
there we go it kind of loses its shape already which is very disappointing for 165 pounds the upper midsole is translucent so it's somewhat see-through if you can see um through there this heel cage underneath is to tighten the shoe that links into the laces so every time you tighten the laces that heel cage tightens also to provide better stability um, and comfort whilst you're wearing these and you can see the heel cage through the translucent upper midsole um, so the heel cage is quite fashionable um it's not just random it you know they've made it to stand out and they've made it somewhat of a design underneath the translucent material which is cool um i'm just not feeling the tpu material it's 165 pounds which is a lot of money and it has a lot more of a cheaper look to it compared to the fly knits so on the tongue of the shoe we've got a chrome badge with a square graphic on and then it's got white font um, written all over it. It says Nike Air, Nike VM 2019, upper CS and the bag is air. And then of course it says TPU, which is thermoplastic polyurethane. Um, I do like the colorway. I'm struggling to understand why this is called Air Max 2019 Premium. Pretty much because there is no difference between this and the Vapormax 2019 standard. The price is the same, £165. The only thing that's different is a variation in colour. The lime tint is a lot more prominent than the air bubble on the Vapormax 2019 standard. The Vapormax 2019 Premium, I'm failing to see the difference. I've got, as you know the blue Vapormax 2019 which is apparently the standard one and now I have the premium and the only thing that's different is the slight variation in color apart from that I notice no differences whatsoever so let's try these on foot and I'll let you know if they're comfortable or not so far the only thing I'm fond of is the lower sole and the base and the lime tint the upper midsole is a letdown. I do like the transparency and the heel cage uh, showing through the transparency of the upper midsole. I like how the Nike swoosh is in the center of the shoe, but I don't like how this TPU material has a cheap look and it loses its structure, as you can see at the front of the shoe. Um, before we try them on foot, just check out the laces in case you're interested in that. I do like the lace structure, they're done very well. It's another cool thing about Nike, they come with the laces already done, saving you the hassle. Anytime I've bought Vans, you know, obviously you've got to do the laces yourself, which is a disappointment. Um, but I like how Nike make every effort to do the laces for you. There's the base of the shoe, if you, in case you wanted to see that. 165 pounds. And now the only thing left to do is try them on foot. So when trying them on foot, my initial thoughts were that they do have a lot of comfortability. It does provide that same feeling of walking on air like the other Air Vapor Max. That's not surprising because the air cushion is actually the same as other Vapor Max series. However, when it comes to um, whether it fits true to size, I'm surprised that I'm a UK size 10 and it felt somewhat loose. So with these, I reckon you can go half a size down. Um, it's disappointing the TPU on the upper midsole because it creases very easily. This is the first time wearing them on foot. So if you can imagine months down the line, there will be tons more creases, which is a big letdown when you're paying 165 pounds for a pair of sneakers. Um, Regarding the colorway and the premium marketing, I mean, it's called Nike Vapor Max 2019 Premium, probably because the colorway is different, nothing else is different. Um, I, if I really, if you really wanted a pair of these sneakers, then it's best to pay probably £20 more and do a custom Nike ID pair of these because that's available for £185. For extra £20, you can put your initials on and maybe an extra symbol and choose your own colorway um, these don't fit true to size you can actually go half a size down and it doesn't have the same snug fit like the Nike Air Vapor Max Flyknit 2 they are comfortable but because it lacks the same snug fit they're definitely not a performance shoe and they're more of a 
lifestyle shoot and definitely underwhelming disappointing i prefer the nike vapor max fly knit 2 and i'm very much looking forward to the release of the nike vapor max fly knit 3 later this month in late march for march madness um so i'm very excited for those I personally think I'm going to return these and cop a pair of the new Nike Vapor Max Flyknit 3. Let me know your thoughts regarding these sneakers down below. Would you rock a pair of these? And I honestly believe if you did really want to get a pair of these and you can get past the imagery of it feeling and looking a bit cheaper than the other Vapor Maxes, then pay £20 more and go for a custom Nike ID version. At least you get to choose your own colours and add your own name or initials thank you all so much for watching appreciate all the support um the views have gone up subscribers have gone up so it's a massive thank you to all of you for tuning in shout out to everyone who comments too and thank you for subscribing and if you haven't subscribed make sure to subscribe because all the content that's been done so far i plan to times by 10 so we're going to get more sneaker content more sneaker vlogs more of everything so look forward to all the latest sneaker content make sure to hit subscribe i appreciate you all for watching have an incredible week and until next time peace and love